guys, this is Jordi from forward3dpainting.com. Today I want to talk to you about how to set up your configuration H file for Marlin to run your machine for the first time. I'm not going to talk about out of bed leveling or mixing nozzles because that's not required to run your machine for the first time. So let's get started. Wait, what is Marlin? Well, Marlin is a compile of complex Python code that defines what your machine is capable of. It's the permanent instructions and compass that you give your machine so it knows how to print. So now, let's get started. So step one, if you haven't downloaded the Arduino IDE, go ahead to arduino.cc. Under the software tab, you're going to select the download the Arduino IDE. They have the installers. Go ahead and run that software, install it, and when prompted, go ahead and install the drivers. Those are the drivers for all the boards. All right, step two. So I want you to go to the internet and go to github.com. On the search bar, you're going to search for Marlin. Now, GitHub is a repository of data. So you're going to see a lot of different Marlins. The one we're looking for is the first one, Marlin firmware forward slash Marlin. Go ahead and click on it. Go ahead and download the zip. I want you to extract that to a place where you can find it easily. Step three. Now we have installed the Arduino IDE and we have the Marlin compile. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug our board to our computer. Okay, now find the Marlin RC file that you extracted earlier. In my case, I went ahead and did it to my desktop. Go ahead and open that file open the Marlin file inside it and now we're looking for this symbol right here this is the Arduino symbol and the name of the file is going to be Marlin this starts the Arduino IDE and this is the first thing you're gonna see when you open it first things first go to this tab right here tools Go to the boards and make sure that the board, the right board is selected. As I say, we're pushing into the Arduino Mega 2560, so you're gonna select this. And now go again to tools and go to the port. You wanna make sure that it's on the right communication port. In this case, you can see Arduino Mega 2560 and COM4. I'm going to select that. All right, now that we selected the right board, let's go ahead and move to configuration H. Go ahead and scroll down past these things right here until you reach serial port. You want to leave that in zero. The reason you want to leave that in zero is because you want your host computer to define which port is going to use to talk to your rep rack. Next, we're going to define your motherboard and it bowed right now. Right here, they have listed the ramps 1.4. If that is not your board, you want to go to this small tab, scroll down until you find the boards.h document, and as you see, it'll give you a list of boards. So you wanna find your board and put that information here. Now, when you put that information there, remember whatever board you have may have a different baud rate. So you're going to have to adjust this number according to the board that you own. Next, scroll down until you find the thermal settings right here. Notice that there's a list of thermistors for you right here. Temperature sensor zero through three, that will mean that if you have four hot ends. So zero is number of your hot end, your number one, and notice that there's a number one on it. That's the thermistor that I input to it. That's 100K thermistor. And notice that your bed has a zero. Now, if you have a hot bed, you want to go ahead and change that accordingly to whichever thermistor you have. Again, the most common one being number one. So let's move down to minimum temperatures. Now it's going to tell you that if the temperature is beneath five Celsius, it's just not going to print. That's understandable. If you're five Celsius, you should be inside, not trying to print outside in the snow. Uh, next one will be um, your heater max temperature. Now, this, I have this set up in my machines, 275. That gives me a great range temperature to print from PLA all the way to PETG. Uh, there's materials that have to have more temperature. That's entirely up to you. Now, that's a risk that you run. 
remember if your parts of your extruder are made out of ABS and you heat up to 275 and one of your fans fail you're going to end up either with a fire or with a soupy extruder so you know take your risk accordingly uh, 150 for the bed again I never heard anybody say that they had to print anything at 150 on the bed but you know that gives you also a great range uh, we're gonna move down again to one of the things that I really want to talk to you. Hey, listen, this is really important. Thermal runaway protection. All right, again, very important. This right here prevents your hot end or your bed from having a catastrophic failure. All right, so you want to have these two undefined, which means you don't want any forward slashes in front of these two. It has two different functions. The first one, it's heating failure. So you set up your extruder or your bed to certain temperature, uh, the machine starts pushing power, the sensor tries to register temperature, it comes back and it tells it either there is no temperature or the temperature hasn't changed. So that moment is going to try to push a little more power and the moment that it's noticed that there is no change in temperature is gonna tell you, you have a heating failure it's going to stop trying to heat it up so it doesn't damage the board. Thermal runaway, you're printing along, for some strange reason, your uh, thermistor becomes dislodged from your heating block on your hot end. So it still sends in temperature fluctuation, not quite as hot as it was, so then it's gonna try to push power. So it starts pushing power and he realized, wait, I'm pushing enough power to already have reached that temperature again, it's gonna say, I have a thermal runaway, which stops it from basically keep on heating up the heater, the heater and eventually just melting your, your hot end and of course your extruder. All right, so leave those on, super important. Let me backtrack a little bit. Prevent call extrusion. Right now we're going to undefine that. The reason is because we are trying to register motion. We do not want to heat up the hot end until we have defined that everything moves properly. So by defining that, we're telling it, I don't wanna to have to heat up the hot end to move the extruder. We are not going to put any filament in our machine until we know that all motions are correct, all right? So pretty much, again, remember, these you can turn back on later if you think that you might forget and push filament while the machine is cold or the hot end is cold. If, again, I've never done that, but if you become distracted, that is just another failsafe preventing you from damaging your machine. All right, well, let's scroll down again. Let's find movement settings. Okay, so notice right here, it says default axis steps per unit. In this case, steps per millimeter. And right here, we're gonna define that. So if you have a GT2 belt, which means every printer most of the printers have some type of belt most of them are GT2 so if you have a Prusa clone that number should be fine for what we're doing right now 4000 for your Z if you have M5 lead screws for your Z like the Mark 1 this is correct if you have the M8 Acme screws you need to figure out which number correspond to your screws uh, an extruder 500. Um, I usually start this around 200 and run my calculations later from there. Um, 200 might be too little for your extruder, 200 might be too much for your extruder. Again, we're gonna run a calculation later how to figure those things. Right now, all we're done is determining motion. So, max feed rate. This is the max amount at any point your machine is able to move. You're defined no matter what I tell you about the print, if I tell you that it's 320 millimeters per second, it's not going to do it. You're telling you can only move this fast. So 300 millimeters per second is rather fast. It's a good number for X and Y. Now Z, notice that mine is already says 20. Usually says five, but that's a little slow for me because I got the Acme screws. So again, that's up to you. I usually leave this in between 20 or five in a number in between those two depends of the machine and how fast he can do things. Uh, 25 for the extruder, that's plenty. The rest of it is acceleration, jerk. No, don't worry about any of that right now. Those settings are to 
fine-tune your machine right now we're just trying to get it to move so we're gonna go down next to direction for some reason or another you turn on your machine and you tell it go home on the Y and instead of going towards the end stop starts going away from the end stop then you know that this is inverted the way that you change this for example here if your Y is going the wrong way you put true if if what you have written here is true and it's going the wrong way then you know you put that false again just adjust those accordingly same thing with your extruder you tell it push a little bit and it starts uh, retracting well then you know that your extruder direction is wrong and this is where you set that now when you start printing later down the road if for some reason your printers are printing backwards one of the things that you might want to do is check your home directions if you're already printing backwards and you don't want to have physical uh, changes to your machine you might just want to change the to max or minimum which defines where the machine finds to be home. Now uh, we're going to move to our travel limits. These define how big your bed and how much your machine can move after going home. Home being the closest point to your end stop. The moment it hits those zeros, it's going to be okay, this is home. And now the maximum is how much is allowed to move from there. So if you have a Prusa clone, these numbers are correct. So we're going to move along now to the very last thing I wanted to cover with you guys, your LCD. Now again, if you have an LCD, you want to turn on those settings. So you're going to come down to the very, it's almost to the very end, your language. In my case, English is my second language, so English. So I'm going to move along again. This plain chart says do not change any of these things, those are the most common ones. This in your machine should, and your Marlin should be undefined. Go ahead and define Ultra LCD. That tells you that it's a character-based LCD. If you have an LCD, you, chances are it has SD support and somehow it has an SD card reader. So define SD support. You're going to move along down and now the only thing that we have to do last is find our actual LCD. Um, if you have again a clone of a Prusa, it usually is this one uh, called the RepRap Discount Smart Controller. As you can see, I already have a defined mine. Yours should not have been defined, so you can go ahead and define it. Now, if you have a different LCD, you might want to look through this list and see which LCD you have and define it. All right, so that's basically it. Now, the only thing, the last thing you want to do. Is you want to verify it make sure that it, the board is there that is the right board and that all this crazy code that you just told all these instructions are going to make sense to it now as you can see it's compiling the sketch once the sketching is compiled I'm gonna go ahead and upload it the moment as you notice because I compiled the sketch first it did it rather quick and now it's uploading so as soon as it finished uploading it's going to tell me I am done and at this point now you can you know plug power to your printer and see what the results of what you have done are. Uh, I hope this video was educational. I hope it helps you find your way to the very first time you do this. If you have any questions, please post them down below the video. Um, please subscribe and give us likes. Um, whatever you do, do it as working for the Lord, not for men. Keep your glass clean. Keep on 3D printing.